In the fall of 2005, Secret Pants had reached the height of their popularity with their wildly popular website and podcast reaching over 800,000 viewers a week. Secret Pants was sitting on top of the world. Little did they know, their career would soon fall to a disturbing and disastrous low. The fans, the money, the women, the rim jobs, ski ball. I mean, we started to believe we were invincible and uh, when you have so many people telling you that you're a god, you have no choice but to start believing it. I was snorting a bottle of rubber cement a week. And not sniffing it, but literally snorting the entire bottle into my nasal cavity. It started as just a pick-me-up, you know? Just keep me going. But after a while, with, with all the shoots and, and all the pressure, I really started to just depend on it. Secret Pants was at the height of their stardom, but their lives had sunk lower than they ever had imagined. Their destructive behavior hit a climax when, during a Teen Wolf-inspired car surfing incident, troop member John Kobolars was hit in the face by a low-flying seagull. So I get a phone call at like 4 a.m. John, Paul, and Brian, they all were in an accident. John allegedly got hit in the face with a seagull. He was in pretty critical condition. And then Brian got arrested for stomping on said seagull over and over again, screaming traitor. And Paul, they're not really sure what happened to Paul. He ran off into the woods naked, screaming something about poltergeists. The troop would later learn that Paul had taken 16 hits of whiteout that night. He would be found, three months later, working on a spinach farm under the name Lupe and speaking fluent Spanish. To this day, no one knows what happened. But, all that aside, the legal and medical troubles facing the troop did not subside. John's medical bills were astronomical, and at the same time we were trying to help Brian Kelly beat the rap, it was costing us literally threes of tens of thousands of dollars a week. And I mean, we tried to, we tried to bring up the money on our own, but we just, just couldn't keep it together under the strain. When the troop went to their financial manager and accountant Leo Slavowitz for money to help with their expenses, they were met with a shocking discovery. Slavowitz had unwisely squandered their money on careless investments. And ski ball Man, did that guy love his ski ball We were broke. Dead broke. Leo, he, he even sold our DVD rights for 600 tokens. It, that's when we realized we were going to have to shape up or else we'd be forced to ship out. After losing everything, the troop finally realized the fragile nature of what they had built. They banded together and were finally able to earn enough money for Brian Kelly's defense by selling one kidney each. Despite their efforts, Brian was eventually found guilty of reckless disregard for animal life and was sentenced to three days of community service. John Kobolars made full recovery and in no time at all, the troop was once again going strong and bringing laughter to viewers all throughout the galaxy. Oh, it felt good to be together again, you know, I never really believed this before, but you have to lose everything to really respect what you have. I can't even describe the feeling. No, no, wait, I can't. It's, it's like hand jobs. Today, the troupe is as strong as ever. Their newest sketch, Heart of Lime, is scheduled for release in early 2008. They're currently working on their comeback album, All But Love, with multi-platinum producer Horatio Squalalilatonga. Well, I think about the past. I think about where we've been, I think about where we are, and, you know, where we're going. Uh, you know, my future is so bright that I gotta wear, um, uh, I don't know, but it's bright, and, uh, yeah.